G'day all, Sticks here. Um, this is going to be the first video of hopefully many um, during my uh, machining adventures. Uh, results may vary, we'll see. Um, but what I'm going to do as a first up is just give a quick overview of the um, the Optimum BF20L um, milling machine. I think it's marketed as a mill drill, um, but this is going to be used primarily as a milling machine. I've got a, a pedestal drill that I'll use for uh, the the rougher drilling, if you will. Um, but I'll give a quick overview of, uh, as I said, first impressions. Um, yeah, let's crack on. So I bought this guy a few weeks back from uh, Machinery House, uh, or Hair and Forbes in, in Perth, where I'm located. <clears throat> um, so they sell all sorts of um, machining stuff, typically import from uh, China and uh, Taiwan. Um, and they've got some, uh, some machines from around the globe as well. Um, so the machine I'm looking at at the moment is the Optimum LV, sorry, the Optimum BF20L, uh, which is a apparently German engineered and designed machine, um, but Chinese made, which is fine. Um, it's right price point had most of the features that I wanted, uh, well that I that I feel I wanted at this point in time. Um, and it seemed to be in the in the showroom and from the research that I had done. Um, a capable enough machine for for the small home shop stuff that I want to do. So there it is. Um, initial outlay was the stand, uh, the vertex vice here, which is a Taiwanese made a vice, um, and then the the optimum itself. So first up, unboxing. Um, I've since dismantled the box, but I was quite impressed. Um, the Hafco machinery that I've got here came in a screwed together, nailed together um, plywood box, um, which is pretty well done as soon as you as soon as you unbox it. Um, but the mill here came in one of these guys, which I'd not seen before. Um, so yeah, once again, plywood, um, but dissemble, dissemblable and reusable um, because of these folding steel tabs, which is pretty good. Um, it was all secured nicely. Um, no dramas there. Easy to transport on a pallet and then uh, on the back of a trailer. Easy as. Um, so I took this guy out of the box um, using a somewhat dodgy setup to put it onto the stand. Uh, I went over the thing, uh, basically cleaned, cleaned the table. Uh, of all the cosmoline and uh, rust inhibitor uh, that was all over it, just sticky, gunky stuff. Um, cleaned all the dovetails as well, uh, got there and there. Um, so it was pretty sticky stuff, so um, a lot of the um, the travel, particularly in the Z direction, was was sticking a bit and shuddering um, since I've, I've taken that off with Caro um, and then used my uh, my chainsaw bar oil, which I use for the, the lathe ways as well. Um, that seems to have uh, cleaned it up all nicely. Okay, um, the table, uh, the, uh, uh, the the handles are moving from the table. Um, I've actually thrown the um, the dial indicator on there and they all seem pretty accurate. Uh, I've got a Mitutoyo dial indicator, so they're all fine. Uh, the only, I guess, grief there is the um, the indicator and the digital readout uh, for, the, for the Z travel um, is out by a considerable margin, um, which is a bit disappointing. Um, so for anything critical, I'll probably have to uh, put together some sort of other setup. So I've got reliable reading. Um, whether that's replacing uh, replacing the the quill DRO, I'm not sure. No, that's fine. Um, otherwise, looking over it, everything has a <laughs> a scraped appearance. Um, I'm not sure if it's been scraped for flatness properly because it all looks the same. If you can see in there, um, there's also a section there which has that scraped appearance. I'm not sure why because there's no metal to metal contact on that. Um, but I guess that makes it look uh, a bit more legitimate. I'm, I'm honestly not sure. Uh, <laughs> the logo up top appears to have been colored in with a texture. Yep, um, they paid someone to do that. No dramas. Um, the uh, the quill guard or the um, the guard for the the spindle itself, um, which I have over here. So normally with a drill or a mill, well normally with any sort of equipment with a safety guard, with exception, um, the first thing I remove is that. So what they've done is used a tamper-proof screw there, um, which theoretically you can only move in one direction. Um, this guy was not done up tight, so off she came. Um, these things I find are more of a hindrance than anything. Um, so yeah. She she came off straight off the bat. Um, came with a came with some goodies. Uh, we've got a cheap oiler. I um, mean, got some spanners. Got a 
a JT6 to MT3 taper adapter. Um, oh, well, the, the spindle in this thing is a, um, a Morse taper 3, which is fine. So uh, the tail stock on my lathe, which is all covered up for the night, um, that tail stock is an MP3 as well. Um, so there's a little bit of conversion there. The only thing I found is lathe is not drawbar, of course, um, whereas the mill is a drawbar, more Taper 3. So a little bit of um, a little bit of adaptability there, but that's that's fine. Um, otherwise, looking at it, features that uh, yeah, plug in um, features that I actually quite like on this thing: um, infinitely variable speed, which is fantastic. High low uh, selector, uh, good. Uh, the integrated work light is uh, not plugged in. Um, sorry, bear with me for one moment. First video gremlin, so I'm not experienced in this. Get in there. And I think I've already stood on the power plug, which is A+. Plus. I think those pins wander anyway. Sorry, unexpected uh, cutaway. My, my food timer went off. Um, so, carrying on. Um, so that's that's in short. Uh, the mill, I'm yet to actually use it in anger. Uh, so hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it comes good um, for reasons that I'll talk about in a moment. Um, ancillary, so the vice, vice mounted up nicely. Um, tramming the head in was made a little bit convenient by this guy here, uh, which is essentially a, a tilt stop for the head. Um, so that came in handy it wasn't perfect um, it does have a gauge up in there which again isn't perfect because the the marker line itself is about a mil and a half to two mils wide so that's pretty useless um, but again using the um, the dial indicator um, she came good the vice everything about the vice seems quite nice um, it moves smoothly um, all the surfaces are machined and ground nicely uh, the handle itself is garbage um, it's a rough casting. It was pretty well had surface rust on it out of the box. Um, but I guess it does what it needs to do. You turn it, things tighten. You turn it the other way, things loosen. So will I upgrade that in the future? Maybe. Do I need to? Not at all. All right, so that's that guy. Um, also with this, excuse all the junk everywhere. Um, also with this package, uh, with, with this purchase, I should say, um, I bought uh, an entry-level uh, collet and cutter set. Um, it's The collet is made by Toolmaster, which is uh, Machinery House's in-house brand, if you will. Um, and the end mills and slot drills were Alcock, um, which I had thought was an alright brand. Um, I'm yet to use them. Um, first impressions, I'll see if you can see this. Let me find it. So the... The finish, yeah, you probably can see that. The finish on these end mills is horrible. Um, there's already apparently, well, what seems to be chunks taken out of it. Um, so either the grinding has been a bit aggressive or the metal itself is not fantastic quality. Um, so I'll probably need to replace those at some point in the future. Um, uh, the the collet holder... Um, Looks nice. Um, got a got an amount of surface rust on it really, really quickly. Um, so I'm going to have to keep this guy lubed up with either WD-40 or uh, CRC. Um, I think we'll go with a, a heavier oil, um, only so it doesn't wash off so easily. Um, I mean, this is an open-aired workshop, um, so that's not helping me in the first place. So <laughs> drawbar, yeah, fantastic. So. From the reading I've done and the small amount of experience that I've had with drawbar Morse tapers, um, they get stuck really easily, really easily. And so you need to beat on the drawbar with a hammer a little bit, which is fine. That normally locks them, normally knocks them loose. Um, this guy conveniently has, uh, I guess, a, a stop there. So grab, grab the bottom, uh, the bottom part of that drawbar, I guess, with some sort of a spanner, hopefully. Um, and then just loosen off the drawbar itself until it pops the tool out. Is mentioned in the instructions. I did read it in the instructions, and I, for some reason, disregarded, and so started wailing on the top of the hammer when my Morse taper got stuck. <laughs> Unnecessary. I think I over-tightened it in the first place, um, but I've 
already mushroomed the drawbar. Um, hopefully, hopefully haven't done any serious damage to my uh, to the the tapered spindle bearings. Um, we will see what happens there. Um, so once I start actually doing some jobs, uh, once I start doing some projects, I should say, um, we'll see what the results are like. Um, could be bad, could be good. Um, I'm leaning towards bad, but I'm going to put that down to inexperience at this point in time. Um, otherwise, yeah, so quick overview with my limited knowledge of machining um, of this guy that I've, I've bought recently. So look out for more videos to come. Um, it's probably all going to be terrible practice, um, but if nothing else, <laughs> my mistakes will hopefully be comedic um, and somewhat educational to, to anybody else who's thinking of doing the things that I'm doing. All right, too easy. Um, thanks for watching, um, and I look to uh, put up more videos when I'm starting to do things. Too easy. Cheers.